What is up, my Phyrexian mites? We have done white. We have done blue. It's time to dive into black. This is the full set preview for Phyrexia. All will be one. Dropping in stores February 10th. Uh, Pre-release weekend is this Friday. So I'm very excited. Let's jump into black. The first black card we have is Ambulatory Edifice. This is the worst ambulance you've ever seen in your life. Um, for two and a black, you get a 3-2 Phyrexian Construct Artifact Creature. Uh, when Edifice enters the battlefield, you may pay two life. When you do, target creature gets minus one, minus one until end of turn. That's not bad. It's not great. We'll see. Next up, we've got Annihilating Glare. Uh, so just in case you weren't aware by this art, uh, Vraska got turned. Um... She is now a Phyrexian, uh, and she is using her powers for evil. Annihilating Glare is one black for a sorcery. As an additional cost to cast this spell, pay four mana or sacrifice an artifact or creature, and you get to destroy an artifact or destroy a creature or a planeswalker. So this is uh, Bone Splinters plus some. It's going to be powerful, especially if you're in one of these archetype, ar archetypes uh, that are making a lot of creature tokens. I think this is going to be a great one to include in your deck. Anoint with Affliction is next. Uh, someone's getting a sweet tattoo here. One and a black for an instant. Exile target creature if it has mana value three or less. And then Corrupted. Exile that creature instead if its controller has three or more poison counters on it. On them. So if your opponent has three or more poison counters, you get to exile any any creature. If your opponent does not have three or more poison counters, then you get to only exile a creature that has mana value three or less. This is a great, great removal spell, uh, both in limited and constructed. This is going to see a lot of play. Um, yeah, as long as you're playing uh, toxic cards and your deck is focused on giving your opponent poison counters this is you can't ask for more in a in a removal spell next up we've got archfiend of the dross this crazy look at this eldrazi looking thing uh two black black for a six six phyrexian demon creature with flying archfiend of the dross enters the battlefield with four oil counters on it at the beginning of your upkeep, remove an oil counter from Archfiend of the Dross. Then, if it has no oil counters on it, you lose the game. Whenever a creature an opponent controls dies, its controller loses two life. So this is a really powerful flyer. But you have a four-turn clock. Unless you have Proliferate. So you're going to want to Proliferate to keep this thing um, from killing you. As long as it, you maintain its oil counters, then you'll never lose the game and it becomes very powerful. The fun thing is, is that there's a lot of cards in other colors that remove counters from creatures. So maybe your opponent speeds up your demise by removing some oil counters from your Archfiend. This is a cool little uh, card. I think this is a fun build around. I hope that mono black players are happy with themselves. I don't know how they sleep at night, but uh, let's move on. Next up, we've got Bilius Skull Dweller. One black for a 1-1 one, one Phyrexian Insect with Death Touch and Toxic 1. That's pretty cool. I like that. Next up, we've got the Sun's Twilight in black. X and black. So it's one black pip cheaper. It's one color pip cheaper than the other two we've seen so far interesting so i'm going to assume based on mana cost alone that this is a little bit worse than the so far we have white at the top blue second uh and this is the third one we've seen up to one target creature gets minus x minus x until end of turn if x is five or more return a creature card with mana value x or less from your graveyard to the battlefield tapped so you get to kill something and return something if it's five or more six mana minimum to do that i would say this is worse than the blue so i was right still white at number one 
Blue number two, black number three so far. Uh, not bad, though. And this one's an instant speed, so so that's cool to know as well. Next up, we've got Blight Belly Rat. One and a black for a 2-2 two, two Phyrexian Rat with Toxic 1. Uh, when Blight Belly Rat dies, you get to proliferate, which is fun. That's a cool little addition. There's some rat synergies in black here um, that we'll see. Uh, so this is an interesting card to include in your black deck. Next up, we've got Bone Picker Scourge. Two and a black for a 2-2 two, two Phyrexian Imp with Flying and Corrupted. As long as an opponent has three or more poison counters on it, Bone Picker Scourge has Death Touch and Life Link. That's pretty great. I think for three mana, you get a 2-2 two, two Flyer. Not bad as is. If you have a 2-2 two, two Flyer with Death Touch and Life Link, that's even better. I kind of wish it was a rat, though, like a flying rat. But skittering, chittering, skitterling. Chittering, skitterling. Say that 20 times fast. Why did I even say that? Say anything 20 times fast and it's going to sound stupid. Um, Chittering Skitterling is two and a black for a 1-4 Phyrexian Rat with Corrupted. Sacrifice an artifact or creature. Draw a card. Activate only if an opponent has three or more poison counters and only once each turn. So it's a 1-4 rat um, that has a sacrifice ability. Not bad. Next up, we've got Cruel Grim Narch. Grim Narch. The Narch Dog. Uh, Cruel Grim Narch is five and a black for a 5-5 five, five Phyrexian Cleric with Death Touch. Um, uh, Phyrexian Cleric with Death Touch. When uh, Cruel Grim Narch enters the battlefield, each opponent discards a card. For each opponent who can't, you gain four life. So this is interesting and constructed, um, but definitely more of a um, commander card. For each opponent who can't, you gain four life, so you have the potential to gain 12 life if people can't discard cards, uh, which mostly they can. Um, but yeah, that's not, it's not great, but it might find a home. Cutthroat Centurion. Two and a black for a 2-2 two, two Phyrexian Warrior. This looks like a Warhammer creature. Um, art Cutthroat Centurion is an artifact creature Phyrexian Warrior. Its ability says sacrifice another artifact or creature. Cutthroat Centurion gets plus two, plus two until end of turn. Activate only once each turn. So this plus that Chittering Skitterling... Um, might be a fun little dynamic. And then we've got the Black Dominus, which is Drivnod, Carnage Dominus. Three Black Black for an 8-3 Phyrexian Horror. If a creature dying causes a triggered ability of a permanent you control to trigger, that ability triggers an additional time. This, is, this has my brother written all over it. Then it's got an ability for two black Phyrexian mana. Exile three creature cards from your graveyard. Put an indestructible counter on Drivnod. That's pretty awesome. That's pretty awesome. That might be the most powerful of the Dominus so far. Next up, we've got Drown in Icker. One and a black for a sorcery. Target creature gets minus four, minus four until end of turn. Proliferate. That's amazing. Love it. I'm putting this in my Demir deck for sure. And we've got a reprint of Duress with some really cool art. One black for a sorcery. Target opponent reveals their hand. You choose a non-creature, non-land card from it. That player discards that card. Next up, we've got Feed the Infection. Three and a black for a sorcery. You draw three cards, lose three life, and then it has corrupted. Each opponent who has three or more poison counters on it th loses three life as well so that's good in commander and good in constructed um you know four mana draw three is not too bad and we've got fleshless gladiator one and a black for a two two phyrexian skeleton with corrupted for two and a black you can return fleshless gladiator from your graveyard to the battlefield tapped you lose one life Activate only if your opponent has three or more poison counters on it. 
that's pretty cool it's um you know there's a long history of skeletons that return from the graveyard zombies that return from the graveyard and this is just a new version of it i like it then we've got geth thane of contracts one black black for a three four phyrexian zombie legendary creature other creatures you control get minus one minus one sure then you can pay one black black tap geth return target creature card from your graveyard to the battlefield it gains if this creature would leave the battlefield exile it instead of putting it anywhere else activate only as a sorcery so geth can reanimate things but everything you have is gets minus one minus one so you're gonna need to find ways to either counteract the minus one minus one or um you know creatures that are big enough that that's not that impactful. Next up, we've got Gulping a Scrap Trap. Yikes. Four and a black for a 4-4 four, four Phyrexian Horror. When Gulping Scrap Trap enters the battlefield or dies, proliferate. That's not bad. The flavor text says, does anyone else hear that horrible crunching sound? Jace. Yuck. Next up, we've got Infectious Inquiry. This art is astounding. I love this. Eli Minaya. Love it. Two and a black for a sorcery. You draw two cards, lose two life. Each opponent gets a poison counter. I like that. That's doable. Next up, we've got Karumanix, the Rat King. Ew. One black black for a 3-3 legendary creature, Phyrexian Rat, with Toxic One. Other rats you control have Toxic One. So, again, Toxic um, stacks. So you can have, if this gives something with Toxic, Toxic One, then it will have Toxic Two. Sorry, a little scratch in my throat. Um... When Kairu Monix enters the battlefield, look at the top five cards of your library. You may reveal any number of rat cards from among them and put the revealed cards into your hand. Put the rest on the bottom of your library in a random order. So this is just rat synergy all day. I love it. Next up, we've got Necrogen Communion. One in a black for an enchantment aura. Enchant creature you control. Enchant creature has toxic too. When enchanted creature dies, return that card to the battlefield under your control. Nice. So this is kind of like... Um, oh my god, now I can't remember the name of it. It is a green card. Audacity? Audacity. No, Audacity is the new one. What's the old one? I cannot remember right now. This is sort of similar. Um... Except for this is for those decks that care about poison counters. I like this quite a bit. Necro Squido. Three and a black for a zero zero Phyrexian insect creature with flying. It enters the battlefield with two oil counters on it. Necro Squido gets plus one plus one for each oil counter on it. Whenever another creature or artifact you control is put into a graveyard from the battlefield, put an oil counter on Necro Squido. So this is a sacrifice synergy, um, much like that blue drake that was a spell synergy. This is a sacrifice synergy. I like it. It's fun. Um, then we've got Nimrazor Paladin. My eyes played a trick on me for a second, and I thought this art was going past the border for just a quick second. Um, so Nimrazor Paladin is four and a black for a 4-4 four, four Phyrexian Knight creature with Toxic 2. When a Nim Razor Paladin enters the battlefield, return target creature card with mana value three or less from your graveyard to your hand. Five mana for a four four with toxic two. Return something with mana value three or less to your hand. That's pretty good. That is pretty good. Next up, we've got Offer Immortality. One in a black for an instant. Target creature gains death touch and indestructible until end of turn. Amazing. Love it. Combat Tricks, Indestructible, and Death Touch. Wonderful card. Pestilent Symph 
Symphoner? Siphoner. Wow, my brain. Uh, one and a black for a 1-1 one, one Phyrexian Insect with Flying and Toxic 1. Not bad. Just a standard little body with Flying and Toxic. Then we've got a reprint of Phyrexian Arena. One black black for an enchantment. At the beginning of your upkeep, you draw a card and lose a life. So for those that haven't played with Phyrexian Arena, it basically gives you two cards at the beginning of your upkeep, but you do lose one life uh, each turn. And this is an important story moment where, you know, Faraska had been turned. Jace had not. Um, he tried to take her on a lovely date to remind her about love and life and being a living creature instead of an oily tentacle machine. And it did not go very well. Obviously, Jace tried his hardest to... Um, find some humanity in his beloved Vraska, but she had none left and she stabbed him through the chest and got him turned into the Jace we saw earlier. Then we've got Phyrexian Obliterator. This is four, four black mana for a 5-5 five, five Phyrexian Horror with Trample. Whenever a source deals damage to Phyrexian Obliterator, that source's controller sacrifices that many permanents. So this four colored mana cycle uh, is really deadly. For some reason, there was not a blue version, but there's been a white version and a black version so far. Um, and that, that's great. That's great. Then we've got Ravenous Necro Titan. Two black black for a 6-6 six, six Phyrexian Horror with Corrupted. When Ravenous Necro Titan enters the battlefield, sacrifice a creature unless an opponent has three or more poison counters on it. So you can play this on turn four if you have something to sacrifice or if you've managed to get your opponent to three poison counters, uh, you can play this uh, as soon as you can and you don't have to sacrifice anything. I like that. I like that. Next up, we've got Scheming Aspirant. Look at the shoulder pads on this outfit. A one and a black for a 1-3 Phyrexian Advisor. Whenever you proliferate, each opponent loses two life and you gain two life. That's pretty amazing. I'm putting that in my Demir deck for sure. Next up, we've got Shieldred's Edict. One and a black for an instant. Choose one. Edicts are pretty powerful spells, generally. So let's see what this says. Choose one. Each opponent sacrifices a non-token creature. Not bad for two mana. Each opponent sacrifices a creature token. Also not bad. Each opponent sacrifices a planeswalker. That's also not bad. So again, more board control. Uh, it has three different options. So you can obviously choose which one is most prevalent to your current debacle. Um, when you cast it, I like it. Then we've got Shieldred's Head Cleaver. This guy is terrifying. Three and a black for a 2-4 for Phyrexian Warrior with Menace and Toxic 2. I love a good Menace and Poison counter combo. Very cool. Not, I mean, like, I'm not foaming at the mouth, but I like it. Stinging Hive Master. This is just a tube with arms. I don't like that. Two and a black for a 3-2 Phyrexian Warlock with Toxic 1. Whenever it dies, create a 1-1 Phyrexian Might Artifact Creature Token with Toxic 1 and this creature can't block. That's okay. It's kind of boring. Then we've got Testament Bearer. Three and a black for a 4-1 Phyrexian Warrior. Damn. When Testament Bearer dies, look at the top three cards of your library. Put one of them into your hand and the rest into your graveyard. That's pretty good get some sacrifice um slash graveyard synergies going in black obviously through two blacks color pie then we've got vat emergence Ooh. four and a black for a sorcery put target creature card from your graveyard onto the battlefield under your control proliferate five mana return something to the battlefield um not tapped either which is good um and you get to proliferate which is also good it is creature card only though so you can't return a planeswalker or anything like that but 
very interesting to see what people do with this. It's a little expensive. If you're playing in a black blue deck and you've got some ways to make your instants and sorceries cheaper, I think this could be really interesting. Then we've got Vat of Rebirth. One black for an artifact. Whenever another artifact or creature you control is put into a graveyard from the battlefield, put an oil counter on Vat of Rebirth. So sacrifice uh, synergies here. Two and a black, tap Vat of Rebirth, remove four oil counters from Vat of Rebirth, return target creature card from your graveyard to the battlefield, activate only as a sorcery. Um, so yeah, you it's a three mana, return something from the graveyard. You also don't, as long as you put enough oil counters on Vat of Rebirth, with, either through proliferation or through sacrifice, um, or just combat even, um, then you get to just pay three and return stuff to the battlefield. And as long as you keep up the oil counters, you can do that a bunch of times. Next up, we've got Vran Executioner Thane, a one in a black for a 2 2 Phyrexian Vampire, legendary creature. Uh, whenever one or more other creatures you control die, each opponent loses two life and you gain two life. This ability triggers only once each turn. So this is almost a great card. Unfortunately, that last bit that stops it from triggering more than once makes it an okay card. Yeah, it'll be fun. People will include this in their sacrifice decks, especially there's been a lot of nice sacrifice synergy so far in black. Next up, we've got Vraska Betrayal Betrayal's Sting. For four black and one black Phyrexian mana, you get a six mana legendary planeswalker. It's their plus O. Their zero loyalty ability is you draw a card and lose a life, then proliferate. Minus two target creature becomes a treasure artifact with sacrifice. This artifact add one mana of any color and loses all other card types and abilities. Minus nine. If target player has fewer than nine poison counters on it, they get a number of poison counters equal to the difference. So if they have zero, you can just put nine poison counters on somebody. That's pretty cool. It's very expensive, um, but it has some utility. So I think that, you know, Vraska might be a Hail Mary limited bomb scenario. Um, I'm not sure how much play it will get in the standard constructed formats, but we'll, we'll have to wait and see. It's got potential. Next up, we've got Vraska's Fall. Two and a black for an instant. Each opponent sacrifices a creature or planeswalker and gets a, po a poison counter. So it's not great. Um, yeah, it's a nice, easy way to put poison counters on opponents. If you haven't gotten the poison counters train rolling and then you want to proliferate and try to get them up to 10 as fast as possible, this is not a bad way to do it. They have to sacrifice something as well. Um, you know, it's okay. I might include one of these in a constructed deck. Um, yeah, I would include, I would include this in a limited deck for sure. Maybe one of them in a constructed deck. And then finally for black, we've got Whisper of the Dross. One black for an instant target creature gets minus one, minus one until end of turn, then proliferate. It's a nice cheap removal spell. Uh, with the added benefit of having proliferate on it, which is fantastic. Um, as far as black goes, I think there's a lot of Drown and Icker is going to probably be my favorite card in black. Um, Annihilating Glare is also pretty good. I like to play just control stuff, so I'm looking at at, at those types of cards. I'm not an Aristocrats guy. I'm not a Sacrifice guy. Um, you know, Duress, Drown, and Icker. Those are my kind of things. Um, you know, there's a lot of cool tools in here for people who play black often, um, who lean more into the black side of the color pie. Uh, I use black more as an a complementary color to what I normally use, which is blue. If I could just play mono blue decks, uh, I would. I play mono blue mostly in standard, so having the ability to kind of trink, 
trickle in some black here and there to supplement and complement what I'm doing in blue is always good. So that's kind of where my brain always falls when I'm looking at these black sets. Um, I think Vran is very exciting. Vraska is also very cool. They also got Phyrexian Obliterator, um, which is, I believe, a reprint. Um, but there's this four colored pip series so far. We've got one in white, and I don't think there was one in blue. Yeah, there's not one in blue. So it's interesting because there's the one in white and the one in black are both very oppressive. Um, I think there's a lot of really cool stuff to be had in... in